Hey guys, my name is Awais Mirza and I welcome you to Revit Architecture Essential Training. Revit is widely used industry standard computer application for architects and building designs professionals. In this course, we will start with the basics like walls, columns, doors, windows, stairs, railing, plumbing and lighting fixtures. We will even create our own component like a custom pool table. But Revit is not just about modeling, I will show you how you can annotate your drawing with text dimension and other standard architectural symbols. Revit allows us to generate live schedule for just about any part of our building model. We will create construction details and compose sheet for printing out of a document set. So if you are ready to begin your journey into the world of Revit, you have come to the right place. So let's get started. Let's talk about different variants of Revit out there. I would like to talk about some of the differences between various variants and also discuss the focus of this course. The main focus of this course is architectural feature. And for architecture we have three different variants of Revit that we should talk about. So there is Revit or Autodesk Revit which is the full product. It's included with the building design suit and it includes functionality for all three disciplines architecture, MEP and structure. Revit architecture includes only the architectural functionality and there's just a little bit of structural functionality. The only real difference between Revit and Revit architecture is essentially in the option dialog where you can choose which discipline are of interest to you and turn them on and off. In full version of Revit you can actually disable some of the disciplines where in Revit architecture you don't have the, that feature. Revit LT is the newest of the variants and it came on the scene a few years ago and you can think of it as a limited version of Revit architecture. It includes a subset of the functionality of the architecture product. Alright, so let's talk about Revit interface. This is what you see when you start a program for the first time. So on the top left corner you have this Revit icon. If you click that it will open a menu bar. It is a traditional menu bar what you get from other Autodesk softwares. Like you can create a new file, open, file, save as, export and close your files. But if you hover over your cursor you get this more advanced options here. You can create a Revit project file, you can create a family project file, we'll talk about it in a moment and so on. And now on the main screen you get this project menu and families menu. In the project menu you got few options here. The first one's to open a project file to create a new project and you got few templates here to make a new project. So if you want to start working on an architecture project you can click on this architectural template. On the right you have this recent project opened in the Revit. So whatever you're working on before it will show up here. Down here you have the families tab which is basically the same options here. You can open any family, create a new family, new conception laws and here you see the recent families you created in Revit. So the difference between projects and families is basically project is a complete drawing but families is just the object you create and use that object to your project. So let's say you will create a table right and then you want to use the same table in your Revit project file so you can bring that family to your project file. I will show you how to do that in a later videos. So on the right you have this resources menu. You can see what's going on with the Revit world. You can access help. You can access skill videos. So you got some great getting started videos here so feel free to check them out as well. Alright so now let's talk about on the top we have this traditional menu whatever you get with the Autodesk software so you can open a project, save a project and so on. Alright so now we talk about two primary elements of a Revit user interface. So on the top we have a quick access bar and down there ribbon. If I click on this architecture as you can see that the ribbon is basically grayed out for now and the quick access bar is grayed out as well. To activate them I actually have to open a project. So for now I'm going to click on this architectural template link so which will open a project file and now we have the ribbon activated and the quick access bar as well. Now we discuss the ribbon a little bit. Ribbon is organized in tabs starting from architectural finishing at modify and we have panels here let's say we got build panel circulation model 
and so on. On the ribbon, let's say if I click on this wall button, it will start a wall command. To cancel the command, click on this modifier, or you can right click and cancel that command. You can access a few more commands by clicking this arrow button. So if I click on this wall arrow button, I get this few walls as well. So I've got architecture wall, structure wall, wall by face. On the right, the few panels have this arrow button as well. So if I click on this, you get more QP commands. So these kinds of panels are basically having more commands. There's not enough room to show them on this panel. So they are situated in this arrow button. So there's one more thing I want to show you here is if I go to my annotate tab and here you can see that you've got this um, arrow button here. If I click on this, so these kind of arrow buttons which will open a dialog box and give you a property. I'm going to go back to my architecture now. And there's one more thing I want to show you that is the quick access bar. So we have this traditional open, save and new, um, create new file commands here. But we've got a few more here. So let's say I want to add this window command to my quick access toolbar. I can do that by right clicking and add to quick access toolbar. I can even delete them so remove from quick access toolbar so this is how you can customize your ribbon now let's talk about context ribbon so what context ribbon means let's go to our modify tab first so we got this default modify tab here which has a panel of properties clipboard geometry modifier and so on so let's say I'll go back to my architecture and I'm going to make a wall roughly here and it will take me to the modify tab but what I want to show you let's say I will make a, just a random wall right and then I will right click and cancel the command I'll click on this modify to exit that command now let's go back to our modify tab and now as you can see that we got the default modify tab here but what if I select this wall here and now you get this context commands on the ribbon as well. So these kind of commands may appear depending on your object you're working on. If you are working on a door, it might be a different commands will show up on the ribbon. So this is basically a context ribbon commands. You can press escape twice to cancel the command. And now we'll talk about option bar. So let's go back to our architectural tab and I'm going to create a wall. So once I'm in a, a wall command, as you can see, I've got a few options here as well. This is called option bar. So depending on the command I am in right now, I will get the different kinds of command here. So I've got this offset, um, unicorn, all that stuff here. So this is basically option bar. So you got to keep attention to these um, context ribbon option bar while making your objects. Your Revit project is a complete virtual model that can be viewed, edited and explored three dimensionally, two dimensionally and in various report and tabular list. Each such representation of a project is referred to in Revit as a view. Views are listed and accessed from project browser palette, which functions much like a table of content for your project. So let's start with where the project browser is located and which is by default is on over the left hand side of the screen directly below the properties palette. So if you don't see that project browser here and you don't see those properties here, so you need to go to the view tab and click on this user interface and turn on properties and project browser. So I'm going to go and turn them on project browser and properties. So on the left hand side, I've got this project browser in the project browser. As you can see that we got all the views of a project. We got level one, level two side. We got ceiling plans, 3D view. So let's say I'll double click on 3D view, which will take me to the 3D view of a project. I can change this wireframe view to shaded by clicking on this button and click on shaded, which will give me a shaded view. I'm going to go back and change that to wireframe for now. So in this project, we have just a simple wall object. So we don't have much uh, views in this project. So we got legends, schedule, all this stuff. I'll talk about this in a later videos, but for now, we stick with the project browser to the floor plan. So to go back to your floor plans, you need to double click on the view, which will take you to that view. All right. So now sometimes you might have a thousands of views set up for your project. So how do you search through all of them? So you can right click and click on search, which will give you a dialog box and you can type level and click on next. 
So as you can see that we got uh, the highlighted marker on the level. So I'll click on next and next one, level one. So you could type specifically something which will take you directly to that view. I'm gonna close that now. And with the navigation, I'll make a separate video for navigation, but quickly I'm gonna show you how you can navigate through your project. For the navigation, I'll make a separate video on navigation, but quickly I wanna show you how you can navigate through your project. So if you hold down your mouse wheel and move around so you can move around your project, if you scroll your mouse wheel up and down, that's you can zoom in and zoom out with it. So let's go to my 3D view. I'm gonna go and expand that 3D views and double click on my 3D, which will take me to the 3D view. And now I will press my shift key and press my mouse wheel and move around so you can see that you can move around in a 3d orbit in your project now let's have a look how can we customize our user interface of a revit program according to your liking so let's say i've got this properties panel here i've got this project browser here so if i just click and hold the mouse and then just drag outside as you can see that it will undock that project browser from that so you can just move around and you can put wherever you want let's say i will take my project browser and i just move it down a little bit here and as you can see that i leave my mouse and it will dock to the bottom of the project which is not a good idea because it will cover the drawing area so we're gonna keep the drawing area as much as we we can and i'll just undock it from that all right so now one more thing i want to show you here let's say it depends where you take your cursor let's say if i take my cursor on the top right it will try docking on the top i'll leave that and now it's gonna dock that to the left and I'm deep down here i've got this properties panel and i've got this project panel so down here you got two tabs basically now on the top of each other so i'm just gonna take my project outside then it will still dock together so i'm just gonna select from here and just separate them all right so now i'm going to take my project properties um, tab and i just leave it there and now I'm going to drag my project browser and try dropping it on the top. So if I just leave my cursor here, as you can see, it will dock on the top of my property. At the end of the day, it's up to you that how you want your program to look and what is easy for you to work with. So these are the few things you can even drag out your, your ribbon um, panels as well, which, which is not a good idea because the default interface is going to be pretty good for you guys to use because at when you go for Autodesk exam this is what you get by default so it's not a good idea let's say if you got two monitors because nowadays people got two monitors set up to their computers so you can drag it out and just drop one um, tab to the second monitor for working but for now I'm just gonna leave that as it is I'm just gonna separate them well, let's talk about shortcut keys in Revit so on the ribbon you got all these commands but if you hover over your cursor to any of the command and wait for the tool tip to come out as you can see that every command got a shortcut key next to the name of the command so the wall shortcut key is wa let's go to the door door is dr and windows got vn so i prefer using these shortcut commands to make your productivity faster let's see how can we execute these commands so for the wall i'll type wa and as you can see that we are in the modify panel and our wall command is on right now and i can create walls i will press escape twice to get out the command and now one thing I want to mention here once you type wa for the wall command do not press enter because what enter does is it executes the previous command what you were using so now if I press enter I'll go back to my wall command because that was the command I was using before so I'll press escape twice to get out the command so any command you want to execute by typing shortcut keys all you have to do is just type two stroke keys just like for the components you got cm so I'll go and type cm and that command will execute most of the commands in revit got shortcut commands but some of the commands don't have the shortcut keys so let's assume that you use floor command a lot so you want to create a shortcut key for that so you can create customize your own shortcut keys by going to the view tab and click on this user interface and click on keyboard shortcuts so as you can see, I've got the shortcut key for the keyboard shortcut as well. So I can come out and I can just type KS for the 
keyboard shortcuts and now you get this dialog box here you can create a new commands and assign them to that in the properties panel as you can see we got three types of commands just for the properties so one or two or more shortcut keys can be assigned to the specific command this will this export button will export this whole list of the command as a text document and you can use that as a cheat sheet but i prefer using that but i prefer using toolkit but i prefer using tooltip to find out the shortcut keys for that specific command which is a lot easier well it's up to you at the end of the day the next video is going to be about navigating views zooming panning and rotating all right guys thanks for watching if you like this tutorial give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you want to learn revit completely please go through all my tutorials one by one do not skip any video because that's gonna get you lost in the course all right thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next video